to this order implicitly containing the sum very near of the whole civil part of the commonwealth my lord archon spoke thus in council my dear lords there is a saying that a man must cut his coat according to his cloth when i consider what god hath allowed or furnished unto our present work i am amazed you would have a popular government he hath weighed it unto you in the present balance as i may say to a drachm you have no more to fix no more to do but to fix it for the superstructures of such a government they require a good aristocracy you have or have had a nobility or a gentry the best studied and the best writers at least next to that of italy in the whole world nor have they been inferior when so exercised in the leading of armies but the people are the main body of a commonwealth show me a gadibus usque ad auroram et gangam from the treasuries of snow as it is in job unto the burning zone a people whose shoulders so universally and so exactly fit the corslet. Nevertheless, it were convenient to be well provided with auxiliaries. There is Marpesia, through her fruit fruitfulness inexhaustible of men, and men through her barrenness not only injured, not only inured unto hardship, but bucked in your arms. It may be said that Venice, save only that she taketh not in the people, is the most incomparable situation of a commonwealth. You are Venice, taking in your people and your auxiliaries too. My lords, the children of Israel were makers of brick, before they were builders of a commonwealth, but our brick is made, our mortar tempered, and the cedars of Lebanon are hewed and squared unto our land unto our hands hath this been the work of a man or is it in man to withstand this work shall he that contendeth with the almighty instruct him he that reproveth god let him answer it for our parts not everything everything is set so so laid that when we come to have use of it it is the next at hand and unless we can conceive that God and nature do anything in vain, there is no more for us to do but to dispatch. The peace which we have reached to us in the foregoing orders is, is the aristocracy. Athens, as hath been shown, was plainly lost through the want of a good aristocracy, but the sufficiency of an aristocracy goes demonstrably upon the hand of the nobility or gentry for that the politics can be mastered without study or that the people can have leisure to study is a vain imagination and what kind of aristocracy divines and lawyers would make let their incurable run upon their own narrow bias and their perpetual invectives against machiavel though in some places justly reprov reprovable yet the only politician and incomparable patron of the people, serve for instruction. I will stand no more unto the judgment of lawyers and divines in this work than unto that of so many other tradesmen. But if the model chance to wander abroad, I recommend it unto the Roman speculativi garbatissimi signori, the most complete gentlemen of this age for their censure or with my lord epimonus his his leave send three or four hundred copies unto your agent at venice to be presented unto the magistrates there and when they have considered them to be proposed unto the debate of the senate the most com competent judges under heaven who though they have great affairs will not refuse to return you the oracle of the ballot of their ballot the counsellors of princes i will not trust but they are but journeymen the wisdom of these latter times in princes affairs saith uh, Ver, 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 verulamius 
is rather fine deliveries and sh shiftings off dangers when they be near than solid and grounded of courses to keep them aloof. Their counselors do not de derive their proceedings from any sound root of government that may contain the demonstration and assure the success of them, but are expedient mongers, givers of themselves to help a lame dog over a stile. Else, who, how cometh it to pass that the fame of Cardinal Reichelau, who hath been like thunder, whereof he we hear the noise, but can make no demonstration of the reason, but to return, if neither the people nor divines and lawyers can be the aristocracy of the nation, there remains only the nobility, in which style, to avoid further repetition, I shall understand the gentry also, as the French do, by the word noblesse. Now, to treat of the nobility in such sort as may be less obnoxious unto mistake, it will be convenient and responsible unto the present occasion that I divide my discourse unto, into four parts, the first treating of nobility and the kinds of it, the second of their capacity of the Senate, the third of the diverse kinds of Senates, the fourth of the Senate according unto the foregoing orders. Nobility may be defined diverse ways, for it is either ancient riches or ancient virtue, or title conferred by a prince or a commonwealth. Nobility of the first kind may be subdivided into two others, such as hold an overbalance in dominion or property unto the whole people, or such as hold not unto an, an overbalance, in the former case a nobility, such was the Gothic, of which sufficient hath been spoken, is incompatible with popular government, for unto popular government it is essential that power should be in the people, but the overbalance of a nobility in dominion draweth the power unto themselves. Wherefore, in this sense, it is the Machiavel, it is that Machiavel is to be understood, where he saith, Cesti tali sono perniziosi in ogni repubblica ed in ogni provincia. That... These are pernicious in commonwealth, and in France, Spain, and Italy, they are nations le quali tutte insieme sono la corutella del mondo. Which, for this cause, are the corruption of the world, for otherwise nobility may, according unto his definition, which is that they are such as live upon their own revenues in plenty, without engagement either unto the tilling of their lands or other work for their livelihood, hold an underbalance unto the people, in which case they are not only safe but necessary unto the natural mixture of a well-ordered commonwealth. For how else can you have a commonwealth that is not altogether mechanic? Or what comparison is there of such commonwealths as are of, as are or come nearest to mechanic, for example, Athens, Switz, Holland, unto Lacedaemon, Rome, and Venice, plumed with their aristocracies, your mechanics, till they have first feathered their nests, like the fowls of the air, whose whole enjoyment is to seek their food are so busied in their private concernments that they have either neither leisure to study the public nor this nor are safely to be trusted with with it kia egestas haud facile habetur sine damno because a man is not faithfully embarked in this kind of ship if he have no share in the freight but if his share be such as gives him leisure by his private advantage to reflect upon that of the public, what other name is there for this sort of man being allures 
but as Machiavel, you see, calls them nobility, especially when their families come to be such as are noted for their services done unto the commonwealth, and so taken to their ancient riches, ancient virtue, which is the second definition of nobility, but such an one as is scarce possible in nature without the former, for as the baggage, saith Verulamius, is to any army, so are riches to virtue. They cannot be spared nor left behind, though they be impedimenta, such as not only hinder the march, but sometimes through the care of them lose or disturb the victory. Of this latter sort is the nobility of Oceana, the best of all other, because they, having no stamp whence to derive their price, can have it no otherwise than by their intrinsic value. The third definition of nobility is title, honor, or distinction from the people, conferred or allowed by the prince or the commonwealth. And this may be in two ways, either without any stamp or privilege, as in Oceana, or with such privileges as are inconsiderable. As in Athens, after the battle of Plataea, whence the nobility had no right as such but unto religious offices or inspection of the public games, whereunto they were also to be elected by the people, or with privileges in those considerable ones as the nobility in Athens before the battle of Plataea, and the patricians in Rome, each of which had right or claimed it unto the senate and all the magistracies, wherein were sometime they only by their stamp or current. But to begin higher and speak more at large of nobility in their several capacities of the senate, uh, Jove Principium, the phylarchs or princes of the tribes of Israel were the first renowned, or as the Latin, the most noble of the congregation, Numbers 1, 16, whereof by hereditary right they made the leading and judging. They had the leading and judging, the patriarchs or princes of families, according as they declared their pedigrees, Numbers 1, 18, had the like right as to their families. But neither in these nor the former was there any hereditary right under the Sanhedrin. Though there be little question, but the wise men and understanding, and known among the, their tribes, which the people took or elected into those of or other magistracies, and Moses made rulers over them, Deuteronomy one thirteen, must have been of these. Seeing these could not choose but to be the most known among the tribes, and were likest by the advantages of education to be the most wise and understanding. Solon, having found the Athenians nearly, neither locally nor genealogically, but by their different ways of life, divided into four tribes, that is, into the soldiery, the tradesmen, the husbandmen, and the goat herdsmen, instituted, to, instituted a new distri distribution of them, according unto the sense or valuation of their estates, into four classes, the first, second, and third, consisting of such as were proprietors of land distinguished by the rate of their freeholds, with that stamp upon them, which making them capable of honor unto their riches, that is to say, of the senate and all the magistracies, excluded the fourth, being the body of the people, and far greater in number than the former three, from other, from other right as to those capacities than the election of these, who by these means became an hereditary aristocracy, or senatorian order of nobility. This was that course which came afterwards to be the destruction of Rome, and had now ruined Athens, the nobility, according to the inevitable nature of such an one, having laid the plot how to divest the people of the result, and so to draw the whole power of the commonwealth unto themselves, which in all likelihood they had done 
if the people coming by mere chance to be victorious in the battle of Plataea and famous for defending Greece against the Persian, had not returned with such courage as irresistibly break the classes, unto which the old they had borne a white tooth, brought the nobility into equal terms, and the senate with the magistracies to be common unto both, the magistracies by suffrage and the senate, which was the mischief of, of it, as I shall show anon in that constitution by lots only. The Lacedaemons were, in this manner, and for the same cause with the Venetians at this day, no other than nobility, even according to the definition given of nobility by Machiavel. For they neither exercised any trade nor labored their lands, their, their lands or lots, which was done by their helots. Wherefore, some nobility may be far from pernicious in a commonwealth. By Machiavel's own testimony, who is an admirer of this, though the servants whereof or thereof were more than the citizens, to these servants I hold the answer of Lycurgus, when he bade him who asked why he why he did not admit the people unto the government of of his commonwealth, go home and admit his servants unto the commonwealth of his family to relate for neither were the Lacedaemon servants nor farther capable of their government, unless whereas the congregation had the result. He would, he should have given them the debate he also. Every one of these that attained unto sixty years of age, and the major vote of the congregation being equally capable of the senate. The nobility of Rome and their capacity of the senate I have already described by that of Athens before the battle of Plataea, save only that the Athenian was never eligible into the senate without the suffrage of the people till the introduction of the lot, but the Roman nobility ever. For the patricians were elected into the senate by the kings, by the consuls, or the censors, or if a plebeian happened to be conscribed, he and his posterity became patrician. Nor, though the people had many disputes with the nobility, did this ever come in controversy, which, if there had been nothing else, might, in my judgment, have been enough to overturn that commonwealth, the Venetian nobility, but that they are richer and not military, resemble at all other points the Lacedaemons, as I have already shown. These these Machiavel accepts from his rule by saying that their estates are rather personal than real, or of any great revenue in land, which comes unto our account and shows that a nobility or party of the nobility not overbalancing in dominion is not dangerous but to but of necessity but of necessary use in every commonwealth, provided that it be rightly ordered, for if it be so ordered as was that of Rome, though they do not overbalance of the beginning in the beginning, as they did not there, it will not be long ere they do, as is clear both in reason and that experience towards the latter end, that the nobility be capable of the Senate is there only not is there not is is there only not dangerous where there be no other citizens, as in this government, government and that of Lacedaemon. The nobility of Holland and Switz, though be but few, have privileges not only distinct from the people, but so great that in some sovereignties they have a negative voice, an example which I am f far from commending, being such as if those governments were not cantonized, divided and subdivided into many petty sovereignties that balance one another, and in which the nobility, except they had a prince at the head of them, can never join to make work, would be the most dangerous that ever was but the Gothic, of which it savors. For in ancient commonwealths, you shall never find a nobility to have had a negative but by the pole, which the people, being far more in number, came to nothing, 
whereas these have it, but they never, but they never so few by their stamp or order. Ours of Oceana have nothing else but their education and their leisure for the public, furnished by their ease and competent riches, and their intrinsic value which, according as it comes to hold weight in the judgment or suffrage of the people, is their only way unto honor and preferment. Wherefore, I would have your lordships to look upon your children as such who, if they come to shake off some part of their baggage, shall make the more quick and glorious march, for it was nothing else but the baggage sordidly plundered by the nobility of Rome that lost the victory of the whole world in the midst of her triumph. Having followed the nobility thus close, they bring us according unto their natural course and diverse kinds, unto the diverse con constitutions of the Senate, that of Israel, as was shown by my right noble Lord Phosphorus de Auga in the opening of the Commonwealth, consisted of seventy elders elected at the first by the people, but whereas they were for life, they ever after, though without any divine precept for it, substituted their successors by ordination, with cerem which ceremony was most usually performed by imposition of hands, and by this means a commonwealth of as popular institution as can be found became, as it is accounted by Josephus, aristocratical. From this ordination deriveth that which was introduced by the apostles into the Christian church, for which cause, I think, it is that the Presbyterians would have the government of the church to be aristocratical albeit the apostles, to the end, as I conceive, that they might give no occasion unto such a mistake, but show that they intended the government of the people to be popular or ordained elders, as hath been shown in the holding up of hands, or free suffrage of the people, in every congregation or ecclesia, for that is the word in the original, being borrowed from the civil congregations of the people in Athens and Macedemon, which were so called. And the word for holding up of hands in the text is also the very same which signified the suffrage of the people in Athens. Hiro ton santes, and the suffrage of the Athenians was given per Hirotonian, saith Emmaus. The counsel of the being, as was shown by my lord Novarcus de Paralo in his full discourse, being the proposing senate of Athens, for that of the Europagites was a judici judicatory, consisted of four, some say five hundred senators, elected annually all at once and by a mere lot without suffrage. Wherefore, albeit the Senate, to correct the territory of the lot, had power to cast out such as they should judge unworthy of that honor. This related no manners only, this related to manners only, and was not sufficient to repair the commonwealth, which by such means became impotent, and for as much as her Senate consisted not of the natural aristocracy, which in a commonwealth is the only spur and reign of the people was cast headlong by the rashness of her demagogues or grandees into ruin, while her senate, like the Roman tribunes, qui fere semper regebantur a militudine magis quam regebant, proposed not unto the result only, but unto the debate also of the people who were, therefore, called unto the pul pulpits, where some, where some vomited and others drank poison. The Senate of Lacedemon, most truly discovered by my lord Laco de Scitale, consisted but of thirty for life, whereof the two kings, having but single votes, were hereditary, the rest elective by the free suffrage of the people. 
But out of such, as were sixty years of age, these had the whole debate of the commonwealth in themselves, and proposed unto the result only of the people. And now the riddle, which I have heretofore found troublesome to unfold, is out. That is to say, why Athens and Lacedaemon, consisting each of the senate and the people, the one should be held a democracy and the other an aristocracy, or laudable oligarchy, as it is termed by Socrates. For that word is not, wherever you meet it, to be branded, seeing it is used also by Aristotle, Plutarch, and others, sometimes in a good sense. The main difference was that the people in this had the result only, and in that the debate and the result too. But for my part, where the people have the election of the Senate, not bound unto a distinct order, and the result, which is the sovereign power, I hold them to have that share in the government, the Senate not being not for life, whereof, with the safety of the commonwealth, they are capable in nature, and such a government for that cause to be democracy, though I do not deny, but in Lacedaemon, the paucity of the senators considered, it might be called oligarchy in comparison of Athens, or if we look upon their countenance for life, though they had been more aristocracy. The Senate of Rome, whose fame had been heard to thunder in the eloquence of my lord Dolabella de Enio, consisting of three hundred, was in regard of the number less oligarchical than that of Lacedaemon but more in regard of the patricians, who having an hereditary capacity of the same, were not elected unto that honor by the people, but being conscribed by the censors, enjoyed it for life. Wherefore, these, if they had had their wills, would have resolved as well as debated, which set the people at such variance of uh, with them as dissolved the commonwealth, whereas if the people had enjoyed the result, as well that there, that about the agrarian, as all other strife must of necessity have ceased. The senates of Switz and Holland, as I have learned of my lord, of my lords Alpester and Glaucus, being bound up like the sheaf of arrows, which this gives by leagues, lie like these in their quivers. But arrows, when they come to be drawn, fly some this way and some that. And I am contented that these concern us not. That of Venice, by the faithful testimony of my most excellent lord, Lincius de Stella, hath obliged a world sufficiently punished by its own blindness or ingratitude to repent and be wiser, for whereas a commonwealth, in which there is no senate, or where the senate is corrupt, cannot stand, the great council of Venice, like the statu statu statue of Nilus, leans upon an urn, or water-pot, which poureth forth the senate, in so pure and perpetual a stream as, which poureth forth the senate in... Um, which poureth forth the Senate in so pure and perpetual a stream as being unable to instagnate is forever incapable of corruption. The fuller description of this Senate is contained in that of Oceana, and that of Oceana in the foregoing orders. Unto every one of these, because something hath been already said, I shall not speak in particular. But in general... Your Senate and the other assembly, or the prerogative, as I shall show in due place, are perpetual not as lakes or puddles, but as the rivers of Eden, and are beds made, as you have seen, to receive the whole people by the due and faithful vicissitude into their current. They are not, as in the latter way, alternate, the alternate life, in government is the alternate death of it. Ut fratrem pollux alterna morte redemit. 
This was the Gothic work, whereby the former government was not only a ship, but a gust too. Could never open her sail, but in danger to overset herself, set, neither make any voyage nor lie safe in her own harbor. The wars of late of latter ages, saith Verulamius, seem to be made in the dark, in respect of the glory and honor which reflected upon men from the wars in ancient times. Their shipping of this sort was for voyages, ours dare not launch, nor lie they safe at home. Your Gothic politicians seem unto me rather to have invented some new ammunition or gunpowder in their king and parliament, dual fulmina belli, than government. For what is become of the princes, a kind of people in Germany? Blown up. Where are the estates or the power of the people in France? Blown up. Where is that of the people in Aragon and the rest of the Spanish kingdoms? Blown up. On the other side, where is the king of Spain's power in Holland? Blown up. Where is what... Where is that of the Austrian princes in Switz blown up? This perpetual peevishness and jealousy under the alternate empire of the prince and of the people is obnoxious unto every spark. Nor shall any man show a reason that will be holding in prudence why the people of Oceania have blown up their king, but that their kings did not first blow up them. The rest is discourse for ladies. Wherefore, are your parliaments are not henceforth to come out of the bag of Aeolus, but by the galaxies to be the perpetual food of the fire of Vesta. Your galaxies, which divide the house into so many regions, are three, one of which constituting the third region is annually chosen, but for the the term of three years, which causeth the house having blooms, fruit, uh, fruit half ripe, and others dropping off in full maturity, to resemble an orange tree, such as is at the same time an education or spring and an harvest too. For the people have made a very ill choice in the man who is not easily capable of the perfect knowledge in one year of the senatorian orders, which knowledge, allowing him for the first to have been a novice, brings him the second year unto practice, and time enough, for at this rate you must always have two hundred knowing men in the government, and thus the vicissitude of your senators is not perceivable in the steadiness and perpetuity of your senate which, like that of Venice, being always changing, is forever the same. And though other politicians have not so well uh, in, imitated their pattern, there is nothing more obvious in nature, seeing a man who wears the same, the same flesh but a short time is nevertheless the same man and of the same genius. And whence... Is this but from the constancy of nature in holding a man unto her orders? Wherefore, hold also unto your orders. But this is a mean request. Your orders will be worth little if they do not hold you unto them. Wherefore, embark. They are like a ship. If you be once aboard, you do not carry them, but they you. And see how Venice stands upon her t tackling. You will no more forsake them than you will leap into the sea. But they are very small and difficult. O oh, my lords, what seaman casts away his card before, because it hath four and twenty points of compass? And yet those are very near as many as and as difficult as the orders of the whole circumference of your commonwealth. Consider how have we been tossed with every wind of doctrine, lost by the glib t tongues of your demagogues and grandees in your own heavens. 
a company of fiddlers that have disturbed your rest for your groat. Two to one, three thousand pounds a year to another, hath been nothing. And for what? Is there one of them that yet knows what a commonwealth is? And are you yet afraid of such a government in which these shall not dare to scrape for fear of the statute? Themistocles could not fiddle, but could make of a small city a great commonwealth. These have fiddled, and for your money, till they have, till they have brought a great commonwealth to a small city. It grieves me while I consider how and from what causes imaginary difficulties will be aggravated, that the foregoing orders are not capable of any greater clearness in discourse or writing. But if a man should make a book describing every trick or passage, it would fare no otherwise with a game at cards. And this is no more if a man play upon the square. There is a great difference, saith Verulamius, between a cunning man and a wise man, between a demagogue and a legislator, not only in point of honesty, but in point of ability, as there be that can pack the cards, and yet cannot play well. So there be some that are good in canvases and factions, that are otherwise weak men. Allow me but these orders, and let them come with their cards in their sleeves, or pack it, or pack if they can. Again, saith he, it is one thing to understand persons, and another to understand matters. For many are perfect in men's humors, that are not greatly capable of the real part of business, which is the constitution of one that has studied men more than books. But there is nothing more hurtful in a state than that cunning man that cunning men pass for wise. His words are an oracle, as Dionysus, when he could no longer exercise his tyranny among men, turned schoolmaster that he might exercise it among boys. Allow me but these orders and your grandees, so well skilled in the baits and uh, palat uh, palates of men, or palates of men, shall turn rat catchers. And whereas counsels, as is dis discreetly observed by the same author in this time, are at this day in most places but familiar meetings, somewhat like the Academy of Provosts where matters are rather talked on than debated, and run too swiftly in order to order an act of counsel. Give me my orders, and see if I have not trashed your demagogues. It is not so much my desire to return upon haunts as theirs that will not be satisfied. Wherefore, if notwithstanding what was said of dividing and choosing in our preliminary discourses, men will yet be returning unto the question why the Senate must be a council apart. Though ev even in Athens, where it was of no other constitution that the popular assembly, the distinction of it from the other was never held less than necessary. This may be added unto the former reasons, that of the aristocracy, be not for the debate, it is for nothing. But if it be for debate, it must have convenience for it. And that convenience is there for debate in a crowd, where there is nothing but jostling, treading upon one another, and stirring of blood. Then, which in this case, there is nothing more dangerous, truly it is, it was not ill said, of my lord Epimonus, that Venice plays her game as, uh, as it were, at billiards or nine holes. And so may your lordships, unless your, your ribs be so strong that you think better or of football, for such sport is debate in a popular assembly, as notwithstanding the distinction of the senate as the 
was the destruction of Athens.